So you you get to see you get to see like a different point of view and like I I really hope to goodness that some people kind of pick up a comic book like this and see something that they, maybe they're not used to or they haven't been exposed for mm -hmm. and it and it starts to create a new normal. Right. Welcome to another episode of The Caption Life, a podcast that covers how comics and pop culture affect life and society, and vice versa. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm one of your hosts, Kevin, and I'm joined by my good friend, James, in Kentucky. Good evening. And uh, Sean in Indiana. Hello. And uh, we are recording tonight a very, very special Valentine's Day episode of The Caption Life. All you need is love. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to do Barry White, like, can't get enough of your love, baby. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so so we're going to talk Valentine's Day. I got a question for you, gentlemen, because I know we're, we're all we're all married, uh, middle aged, married men. Uh, do you guys have any special plans for your special ladies for Valentine's Day? No, we do not. <laughs> uh, it, no, it Sarah falls, and I actually don't. It falls on a Friday this year, Sean. Put some effort into it. <laughs> well, so that happens to be the weekend where uh, my wife has her family reunion. So we're going to be driving out of town for that. But uh, we actually haven't really celebrated Valentine's Day for a long time just because we kind of, you know, came to that realization. It's just like, you know, we celebrate our love like all the time it's so a trap. we just think it's a yeah. <laughs> it's a trap Actually, sarah's the one that came up with that like i never said exactly anything. she's she's <laughs> lying to you you, no, you no. okay well then then you consider this now's the perfect opportunity to surprise her here's the thing when she and i were first dating i sent her flowers like I, I paid for flowers to get delivered to her dorm room, I think for Valentine's Day. And she was really excited until I told her like how I paid like 75 bucks for that. Mm -hmm. And she was like, that is way too much money. Next time you go to Kroger and just buy a dozen red roses like for 10 bucks, that is much better because I just cringed hearing how much you paid for that. So <laughs> my wife hates flowers, so I completely identify like with yeah. that. <laughs> my wife doesn't hate flowers. She just hates spending money, you know. She oh. always looks for deals and everything. Mm. So that too. That too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, James? Um, well, since we don't have any kids, we kind of... Uh, Remember, this is a family show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have that kind of uh, tether, I guess, if if you will. So we're actually uh, getting a cabin for the weekend. Okay, So nice. that'll be kind of nice. So just kind of get away for a few days. So that'll be nice. Roaring, roaring fire in the... The foothills of uh, Kentucky. Yeah. So All right. that'll be better than uh, our first two Valentines years ago, which were story. disastrous. But OK, very first one when we were in college back in 2004, uh, we just met. I knew she was into museums and all this stuff. So we went to the uh, Cincinnati Art Museum and turns out they had this uh, show about the Pope's robes there, like all his oh. vestments and things like that. So we ended up going right. there and it was awful. They say that doesn't scream sexy to me. It was the <laughs> farthest thing from, but and um, <laughs> we got lost on the wrong side out of town and it it was just a mess but the wrong side of cincinnati does yeah sound so that was a <laughs> little weird and uh the next year i decided you know what i'll try cooking something so i found all these recipes online for chocolate everything so i made chocolate pork chops mm -hmm. uh uh, mashed potatoes with a chocolate gravy and like a chocolate molten lava cake 
we were sick for three days after that, but uh, <laughs> I don't, I still to this day don't get to cook that often, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> like she goes, she goes to work and like she, people are like, Hey, do you have any plans? Like, Oh yeah. James is cooking for us. And everybody's like, Oh, we'll pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So now it's just like, eh, we'll just get a, a cabin for the weekend and <laughs> just order a uh, heart shaped pizza from Papa John's. Yeah, just do right. something <laughs> like that and just keep it simple. Uh, so uh, my my wife uh, every year around Valentine's Day usually encompasses it usually falls on Valentine's Day too. She goes to the Texas Music Educators Association convention in San Antonio. Uh, I want to say that in the 14 years that we've been married, that we, sounds hot. We, we have, here's the deal. So the, the 14, the 14 years that we've been together, um, we've only spent Valentine's to get to Valentine's day together two or three times because she's always at this convention. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this year on Valentine's day, um, my wife is going to be out of town, but I do have a date with a pretty young blonde, uh, because on Thursday the 13th, I'm taking Caroline to our very first daddy-daughter dance. And she's extremely excited. Oh, nice. It. So she has a, a pretty pink uh, princess gown. It's princess themed. So she has a pretty pink princess gown. Uh, and then I ordered a uh, a pink vest and tie combo off Amazon earlier in the awesome. week. Awesome. So that uh, I can coordinate with her. Um, and she was like, are you going to take me out to dinner first? And I was like, <laughs> uh, I, oh, I guess. We're, going, we're doing the whole thing, right? And she's like, I want to go to McDonald's and eat inside. <laughs> See, I was about to say. <laughs> when, we live in a very, very small town. Uh, McDonald's is one of the few places that we have. Uh, it's not the height of Willis. Um, uh, you know, culinary culture, but uh, that's that's where she wants to go. And Madden was like, "I don't want to go to the dance, but can I still go to McDonald's?" <laughs> you guys, I'll, I'll take the pictures. <laughs> so, yeah, I think on Saturday, um, Kathy still be going on Saturday uh, after Valentine's, and we Madden always Madden and I always call it Palentine's Day. We go do something together. There you go. So I, I'm probably gonna take the kids to see uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on Palentine's Day on Saturday. Oh, nice. There you go. So Valentine's Day is is an exciting time of year for a lot of people. It's a depressing time of year uh, for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, but listen, there's been a long history of uh, of love and coupledom in comics. And we I, we figured now would be a, a good time to talk about that. So uh, we want to we're going to touch on a lot of different things in this episode, but it's all going to be featured around or focused on uh, the most uh stories stories from comics featuring featuring couples we'll we'll even get into maybe what we call the the mount rushmore of comic couples here in a few minutes but sean sean you you came you read some stuff and researched this uh and you have some things that you wanted to share with us so why don't you why don't you jump on that yeah so uh i was researching this and um I thought it might be fun to kind of do like five did you know facts and um, that I came across in researching this and see if you guys knew any of these things or not and see if our audience knows this too. So um, the first thing I want to hit on is did you know that Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Robin, a.k.a. Nightwing, um, had a relationship with Helena Wayne, who is the daughter of uh, Batman and Catwoman? I did know that. What about you, James? Yep. I ah, did. dang it okay well yeah so that was number one <laughs> only, only because only because years ago i got some of the uh the huntress like miniseries um oh uh, yeah comics yeah. and i really like her as a character i don't like the helena wayne version but i do like huntress i think her costume is uh pretty dope mostly because i'm a big fan of purple right um if you got if you got purple and and arrows like the huntress or hawkeye uh, <laughs> i'm down awesome but uh yeah so that she's the, but it was she's a like a different earth version of like a different version of uh the huntress right in like the multiverse mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh but um number two let's, sorry you can one of the things that we, we talked talk about this i think it's going to come up pretty often uh if you if you did a web like one of those like visual diagrams of like 
who's been in a relationship with uh with who yeah it, it, it would pretty much just look like a like a spider's web because it would just be <laughs> crisscross all over the place. really just be a big blob everywhere <laughs> yeah 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 it would be i know yeah well especially with all the different uh universes that they have out there so and and i seriously i make fun of kathy all the time about watching gray's anatomy because mm -hmm. it's literally yeah like a caris it's literally a carousel of relationships right and then i'm like uh, i read comics and it's exactly <laughs> the same thing <laughs> it's the same all right <laughs> all right next one did you know and you guys probably know this so i'm not going to be surprised but before Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson, it was Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy was the first love interest for Peter Parker in the Marvel comics. Yes, yeah. and spoiler alert, uh, Green Goblin threw her, uh, Gwen Stacy off the uh, uh, Manhattan Bridge mm -hmm. and uh, killed her. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, no, technically, so. Peter killed her. Oh, really? Yeah, because he caught her with the web and it snapped her back. Like, oh, well, that's, like it that's in the well, Spider-Man movie, though, right? No, that's the same way it happens in the comics. Too. Oh, did it? Yeah, she was uh, she was already dead before he caught her in the comics. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, there you go. Or what was it? The Manhattan Bridge or the Brooklyn Bridge? It's it, could, it doesn't matter. They all look the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're Sorry, both New the York. same. So, <laughs> which, if which anyone sorry, in New York I mean, is I love, listening, I love, I love engineering and architecture, and I love all the bridges in in New York. But if you're not from New York, they all look the same. Side note: if you if you would like to read an interesting book about the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Peter J. Tomasi has a book called The Bridge, um, and it's a graphic novel. Oh, yeah. and it's outstanding. Oh, cool! I have to put that on my list to read. Um, speaking of Spider Man, did you know that Aunt May? was married to J. Jonah Jameson's father and almost married Doc Ock. Now, I didn't know either one of those things, but since yeah. you said that, that's got to be pretty awkward <laughs> when Doc Ock was Spider-Man, like in the Superior Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's it's fascinating. That made, <laughs> yeah, that made for an uh, interesting storyline with uh, Spider-Man and uh, Doc Ock. Right for a while there with that kind of love interest there right but you know what um outside of outside of uh, M marissa tomei in the movies mm -hmm. uh, Ma uh aunt may has been a thousand years old for like the <laughs> longest time right so like although sally field in the amazing spider-man movie she i mean she was the, the i mean Let's be honest, there's only, you know, one other before her, but like she wasn't um as old as the original Toby Maguire yeah, one. But the original yeah. the original the, the whoever plays her in the original Toby Maguire version she looks, was 102. <laughs> she, she looks much more <laughs> like the good. Listen, there are a lot of comics where they make Aunt May look like a corpse on like in yeah. CIS. Yeah. Like she's she's already starting to rot. Yeah. And it's, it does, yeah. it's, they're not doing her any favors. The best thing that they did to that character was make it Marissa Tomei. Right. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Number four, Shadow Cat, a.k.a. Kitty Pride from X-Men. And Colossus was in a relationship um, in the 80s, but it was a little bit scandalous because Colossus was 18 and Shadowcat was 14. I think, didn't didn't they kind of uh, allude to that a little bit in the uh, X-Men movies back in the 2000s? Uh, I don't know if they, I mean, they may have hinted. Like... Like, I think they like all they implied hinted. that they were all older teenagers, though. Right. Yeah. It's it's like they hinted about it, but I don't like. But but she's not. she's she's like in a love triangle with Iceman in the um mm -hmm. in the movies. But yeah, so right. she was introduced in the early eighties, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. I don't. I mean, I I know that today it would be extremely scandalous if they spelled it out. You know what I mean? Right. But they, right. I think they kind of like shied away from like the, the, the details of it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, she was like super young. I remember I wrote, I read not too long ago, I reread um, God Loves, Man Kills. 
and she was fairly new to the the group and that came out mm-hmm. like in 82 right um and then i guess when joss whedon took over for like the what is his run called i'm looking on my shelf here uh <laughs> the astonishing x-men mm-hmm. that they kind of picked up their relationship again right uh but it was i guess you know but even who, in, who, in the 80s when tell? they introduced this yeah like there is a lot of um I, I didn't read it as backlash, but I mean, a lot of people, I guess, kind of raised their eyebrows in terms of that age difference, you know, even back then. So, yeah, see, I wasn't around back then. <laughs> None of us were. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's it's hard for us to tell. It's hard for us to look at it without like a little bit of retrospective. Right. Um, because because we, we have we base all of our, our our opinions off of what we know about today. Right. Um, you know. So they they ended up almost they a uh, spoiler alert they ended up almost getting married last year. Did you guys did you guys read any of that? Oh, I haven't had a chance to read that yet. No, I didn't read it, but I kind of kept up with all of that because so they, they a lot built, of people were getting married. Right. This during. is a good this is a good way to transition into two two other um, topics because they've they've been a couple they've been a couple kind of off and on for a long time you know they've both had they both had other relationships but they came back to each other and they were going to get married and marvel was like selling like you know selling it as like this big event they had people do special covers and everything Mm -hmm. and uh she ends up this is brutal okay so psych or uh, colossus goes to put the ring on her finger and she phases Oh. Like because she's so unsure that she wants to do it. Right. And like that's like a that's if that's not a broken broken heart. Right. I don't, man, I don't know. That's just that's a ter- it's a brilliant way to write it, but it, it makes you feel terrible for the guy. Right. <laughs> well, but, um, I mean, and that's a like you said, that's a great way to great way to write it because uh author comic authors or, or comic writers will always tell you like the the great things about writing comics uh superhero comics is that you can use their like strong abilities or physical attributes as some sort of like fatal flaw or metaphor to use and i think that's a great one for you know shadow cat you know phasing because he's unsure and then this man of steel literally you know getting his heart broken like it's kind of a nice little uh um uh, opposite mm-hmm. what's the word i'm looking for juxtaposition uh, yeah thank you juxtaposition you know sometimes sometimes i got it Sean. sometimes <laughs> those vocabulary words sometimes they find me right. uh, <laughs> so but what happens in what happens in the comic is because there's no nobody actually gets married uh gambit and rogue actually decide to like use the fact that everybody's there <laughs> <laughs> he gets down on one knee and proposes and she says yes and they get married on the spot because because <laughs> they're so uh what's the uh, now i don't know the dang word they're uh <laughs> they're spontaneous right and so yeah it's so and then they immediately hey, launched they didn't it. have to pay for it right mm-hmm. i would have done the exact same thing <laughs> cool, <free Right>. wedding. <laughs> then they immediately wa- launched a comic about them called mr and mrs x like yes uh, i heard about that yeah about right after that and favorite um one of my favorite comic couples of all time mm-hmm. so, but i want to put them on the back burner we're going to come back to our favorite comic couples all right you you had mentioned colossus um and shadow cat and then you had you had one more did you know was yes. a couple and yeah. i want you to get to that one i'm going to come back to colossus okay uh, for a second yeah so the final uh did you know is did you know that in one of the marvel universes wolverine and hercules was a couple that one i did not know i did know that i read that somewhere oh yeah yeah, and that's one of the more interesting relationships because that happened a while ago, didn't it? I think it was. I, I want to say was it too long ago? I I can't remember what year that came out. Um, I feel like it's real. It's definitely was in the eighties, like the Colossus yeah. and Shadowcat one. But I want to say it's probably like late nineties or yeah, um, somewhere around tw- twenty ten maybe, but. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. And, yeah. and I, th- I think what's also interesting to think about that is 
how there's that traditional notion of like masculinity Mm -hmm. And like, you know, when you're talking about masculinity in comics, like Wolverine and Hercules is pretty much like that definition of. um, Are there any more? Are there any more masculine examples? And I mean, right. You're talking about you're talking about a couple that like like when things get hot and heavy, their body hair alone stick together like Velcro. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, I but I think it's a. it's uh, really great for them to show that, you know, kind of flip the whole idea of masculinity on his head is that, uh, you know, it's not what we usually think it is or right. at least give you, you know, um, uh, a context to think about. So, but yeah, I didn't know that either. So I came across and thought I'd share that with you all if you, if you didn't know I didn't about know that. either, but I will say that um, my, because we just talked about Colossus, my, one of my, I, I make no bones about it. I am a, a lifer on Marvel's Ultimate Universe. Mm-hmm. I've read every um, issue of the Ultimate X-Men cover to cover multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one of the people that think that Ultimatum is a good comic. I don't, I don't care what you guys think. It was <laughs> Game of Thrones with comic book characters before Game of Thrones came along. Mm-hmm. They killed everybody. <laughs> um, but in the Ultimate Universe... Uh, Colossus is gay and oh, okay. he has a huge crush on Wolverine. Oh, and I think I remember this now. Yeah, yes. actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he has a huge crush on, on Wolverine and um, they kind of like, they touch on it several times throughout the 100 issues um, and Wolverine is aware of it, but mm-hmm. he also doesn't let it. Um, he also doesn't let his, like, he's not, like intimidated or afraid of it or, you know, grossed out by it or whatever. He, he understands that the Colossus is his, you know, teammate or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And although he doesn't feel the same way about him, he's not like homophobic or anything. Right. And then there are, there are tons and tons of gay and lesbian couples in comics. I think it's one of those, I think it's like a real parallel to the kind of like the, the struggle that uh, let's say specifically the mutants in X-Men have gone through with being different than uh, everybody else and not being accepted into society that that those kind of themes have become more and more prevalent or prominent in comics mm-hmm. because it's always kind of been a safe space for people who are different. Right. And well, I mean, and that's not that's also not true because anything gay or lesbian related um, was banned for 45 years between 1954 and 1989 because of the uh, the comics code authority, they just flat out like you guys can't touch this stuff. Mm-hmm. But once the once the big companies started bucking the trend and or you know the system and saying we're not gonna we're not gonna follow those lines, you started to see things become more and more acceptable. So you you get to see you get to see like a different point of view and like I I really hope to goodness that some people kind of pick up a comic book like this and see something that they maybe they're not used to, they haven't been exposed for. Mm-hmm. And it, and it starts to create a new normal. Right. Yep. So let's, but let's, let's talk about our, let's talk about our favorite comic couples of all time. James, do you have, do you have a favorite comics couple? It's, you know, it's really hard to choose. Uh, Cause there's so many, uh, but the first one that comes to mind is Bat and Cat, Batman and Catwoman. And speaking of which, DC just released this January 30th, Batman, the Bat and the Cat, 80 years of romance between the two of them. So it's got uh-huh. their it's got their first uh, story together. Mm-hmm. It's got their story from Hush and it's got some of uh, Tom King's recent stuff in it. They've been one of the more iconic couples. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I I tell you what couple, though, I like more than them, though would probably be Scott Free and Big Barda. I do like the way especially that they were they were portrayed in uh in Mr. Miracle. Yeah, in mm-hmm. uh Tom King and Mitch uh Garrett's Mr. Miracle run made them truly an iconic couple. They made them, you know, that kind of superhero couple, but they just had that those everyday things that you had to worry about, mm-hmm. like... Like changing the baby's diapers and stuff. Yeah, and worry about Batman killing babies and things like that. 
you know, you have to worry about the toys that go in baby's cribs. And, you know, what are you going to do when people are, you know, going to come by the house? You know, how do you entertain them? You know, just those basic kind of everyday things. You I, get a veggie <laughs> tray. The veggie you tray. know? <laughs> I, I, I like Scott Free and how comfortable he is with uh, being with a taller woman. Yeah. Is that how you feel, Kevin? No, my wife is <laughs> my wife is uh, about seven inches shorter than me. But I will say, <laughs> like some, I think so many people look at like like the male male versus female height as a as a stumbling block to mm-hmm. uh, a relationship. And kudos to Scott Free, mm-hmm. which Big Barda is uh, kind of a misnomer of a name. She's taller than he is. By a lot, but she's also a very beautiful woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that name doesn't quite fit, but, you know, she's like seven foot six. You know, she's pretty tall. Actually, also, when I was when I was in college, I was in love with Ruth Riley. Do you guys know who Ruth Riley was? No, she was she was a six five center for the Notre Dame women's basketball team. Okay. Oh, okay. And, and I was like, she was like legitimately like almost a foot taller than me, but I thought uh, she was amazing. Uh, when when my grandmother was alive, she used to watch girls sports all the time, like ladies sports, girls, mm-hmm. girls softball tournament, girls basketball tournament on, mm-hmm. on ESPN2 or whatever. And like I was with I was at her house one day and I saw the Notre Dame women's basketball team playing and Ruth Riley, man, Sean, you're <laughs> lucky you live in Indiana. <laughs> So here, here's the here are my two favorites. Well, I already said one. Uh, Gambit and Rogue uh, mm-hmm. were were a, were a big part of my childhood. Watching the X Men cartoon, and mm-hmm. uh, I always I always felt it was so tragic that he was in love with her, but she couldn't touch him uh, mm-hmm. because uh, of her powers and whatnot. And he was so suave. He was he was the antithesis of of the way I am. Like he was he was a real ladies man. He was a romantic. Well, I'm a romantic, but I'm definitely not a ladies man. I'm lucky to have the one lady that I have. Um, But he was also willing to take the pain so that he could be close to her so that he could touch her. And Mm -hmm. that says a lot about uh, a guy. Yeah. Um, the, the other one that, the other one that, uh, I love, and it's not going to be a surprise to you guys is Clark and Lois, right? <laughs> Lois and Clark, um, that I have, I have an auto, well, actually it's Kathy's, but I have an autographed Dean Kane picture in the, in the office here. Um, oh, nice. and that's, uh, yeah, she got, she got to meet Dean Kane, uh, at a Comic-Con, uh, in 2018. He's, he's the nicest guy, uh, yeah. to, um, and and that show was a big part of of both of our childhoods. She had a huge crush on Dean Cain um, mm-hmm. growing up, and I was just thankful that there was a Superman TV show. Um, right. He did all like even for a short person like me, he always seemed like the short end of what super where Superman should be. But but it's <laughs> it's you know it's fantasy. But he did a great job. He did. With it. I loved him oh, growing up. Yeah. He, oh, he did. He did a fantastic job. As so. um, yeah. It's, it says something about like the way your personality can carry a character. Mm-hmm. I've, I've always really, really loved uh, their story, you know, and I, I, I don't know that I consider her like, like as iconic. I mean, I guess he's not as iconic of a Superman as Christopher Reeve is either. Um, but they like for the time and place that they came along, they like, they did do a fantastic job and maybe that's why I'm nostalgic about them. But I also love, the the character characterization of um them in the comics she went from being like the damsel in distress to being a you know an, an a, a very very integral part of his who he was because they were in love and they were together and now in more recent continuity they have a son together um and you get you've gotten a lot of what it's like for them to be parents and whatnot and if i'm not mistaken um, the CW has has greenlit a new Clark and Lois uh, mm-hmm. show they have. that will yeah with the Supergirl uh, actors that will yeah. feature yeah. them as parents. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah, you definitely. know, and uh, Lois Lane has had her own comic for about the last eight months now. So oh, cool. Also, um, the movie. And the comic book are actually really, really close adaptations of one another. Um, 
the All Star Superman that was by Grant Morrison mm-hmm. and uh, Frank Quietly. That is an amazing is an amazing version of their of their relationship, and you know how he the you know what he's going through like in his impending death and how he he's he wants to spend time with her and things like that um it's uh, it's very very good Mm -hmm. sean do you have any that we haven't touched on well i mean i'm just gonna add on to what you said kevin is i think um iconically like you know lois lane and and clark kent superman is probably one of the you know top couples in uh comics that we think about when we uh think about that topic so uh, that was one i was going to bring up but for me personally the one that the one couple that i always think of um when i think about comics is just the classic x-men uh cyclops and gene gray relationship which i know you know if you look at the comics it's been a little bit iffy because one gene gray keeps getting killed off right well, and that and he keeps like well <laughs> he keeps like shacking up with her like doppelgangers or right her clone. or clones yeah emma frost right like he it, it's interesting because and i i want to think that this is just like a bad case of bad writers for his character because i feel like he has a lot of um potential and and being like a strong leader but it's just like it seems like when it comes to relationships he just makes like poor decision for like Terrible. no reason yeah Terrible especially sense. um you know when gene gray died and then he fell in love with Madeline Pryor, who was a clone of Jean Grey. Mm -hmm. And then they have a kid. And then when he found out that Jean Grey is actually alive as he came back, he dumped his wife and dumped his kid to be with him. I was just like, that that is crappy right <laughs> and he's so a, he's legitimately a crappy person <laughs> and and yet i've always thought so I, i've never been i a have, I have a copy of x-men number 30 their their wedding issue right yeah like signed and framed on the wall behind me because <laughs> because they the, i mean they just that story i guess that story just came along at a time when when i was really really big into comics so so it just it was it was the wedding issue for me as a kid. You know, that every once in a while, comic companies, they have a wedding, you know, to celebrate or whatever. And I, it's mm-hmm. usually to sell books. Right. Like the, both companies were guilty of pulling the pulling the rug out from under us over the last year. Right. With, yeah. with their with their proposed wedding stories. But. Yeah. Well, didn't um, Ben Grimm and Alicia Masters get married over the summer to the thing and uh, his yeah. girlfriend? Like I know they were going to get married at the same time as uh, uh, Colossus was, but I don't know if they actually went through it or not. I've not actually read that storyline or not. Yeah, well, I can't remember. But a, a few years ago, um, the editor of DC Comics said, "We're not doing any more weddings. The characters aren't allowed to be married anymore." <laughs> and it was a really, really bad look because it was like right after. Um, Kathy Kane uh, got engaged to a woman as as Batwoman, mm-hmm. right, like she yeah. was in a lesbian relationship, mm-hmm. and <laughs> it made it look like like they were like blocking her from her happiness because they they didn't want that storyline because it was too controversial. And I don't know if that's the reason or not, but right. um, I don't necessarily know that following the daily routines of a married couple makes for interesting <laughs> <laughs> an interesting story. Mm-hmm. But not always. But I, mean, I, I think it'd be interesting because if you think about um, putting it in in different contexts, in terms of yes, they're married and now they have a family, but they're still, you know, on on a superhero team, so they have superhero duties. Like that can impact your family life, right? And and like your marriage and things like that. Because we see that happen all the time in, in comics and in television shows and things like that. So I think there is a kind of a uh, opportunity to write some uh, potential um, storylines to kind of explore some of those things about um, how love can kind of t- um, be tested through like, you know, some of these circumstances uh, looking at Cyclops as an yeah. example, right? And how he continuously failed. I don't know why I'm saying that he's iconic for me. And yet I keep bringing up how he's been really bad at this. I think it's just because <laughs> like X-Men has a special place in my heart. And then when I think of Cyclops, I think of Cyclops like from the sixties where they didn't give him a bad. Oh, I get it, Sean. What? 
He taught you what not to do. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Right? yeah. You, that's exactly why. Do what I say, not as I do. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, like if you go back to the Mr. Miracle by uh, Tom King and Mitch Garrett's too, you know, when they're fighting the war mm-hmm. uh, in that, you know, like Scott Free would take like the day shift while Big Barter would be at home taking care of the baby and then they'd switch, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, they'd go a long time without seeing each other and things like that. So they just have to balance everything out between, you know, trying to wage, you know, this intergalactic war, you know, against dark side versus, <laughs> you know, like being parents and, you know, being married and stuff. So it's just, you know, a balance between those two. And that book did a really good job of trying to balance all that out. Mm-hmm. We we need more comic couples books like that. Like, how do you face the end of the world? Like, how do you face these problems on a day in and day out basis and then still do enough to keep your relationship together? Right. Yeah. Like let's not let's not jump from bed to bed mm-hmm. <laughs> like uh like a certain red suited horned uh <laughs> superhero. Uh with I I mean technically that's all of them. Just like dare, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know for I know for sure that, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I know for sure that Daredevil is is uh a, a is a choice offender, but right. But yeah, yeah. How do you how do you face these how do you face these dilemmas and then manage to stay together? I will tell you one of the things that that about the the Mister Miracle book is that what James was saying. You know, they they're switching back and forth. They're taking time. They're exhausted or whatever. And yet in the book, the moment they get a chance to um, like be together and, and be a couple again, they end up pregnant <laughs> again. Yeah. And so it's, it's a completely, that's exactly what it's like. It's like, as soon as you think that you, you've like made it through the clear, you start the whole thing over again. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so you know what? Life is, life is tough, but it's easier when you have someone to share it with, you know, all the, the ups and downs, the even Ruth Raleigh. <laughs> yeah. I, listen, come on. <laughs> if you guys start sending me Ruth, Ru- Ruth Riley memes, I'm going to send that with life my is... high school musical memes I send you all the time. <laughs> You're right. I could come to Indiana and 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 hug somebody that's six foot six, but it's probably going to be you, Sean. Me sooner than Ruth Riley, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, you sooner than Ruth Riley. Wherever Ruth Riley is at, I hope that she's found somebody that that makes her happy, and and that's what it's all about, really. It's it's finding the one that that you know that you you go home to after all the the hard days of battling the scrolls or the maniacal dictators of this world. So, hey, we're gonna wrap it up with that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this this episode uh, of us pouring our hearts out to you guys. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button on whatever major podcast platform you listen to and look for us on social media. We got Twitter and Instagram at Caption Life. Uh, if you like what we're doing, give us a shout out, tag us in a post. And until next time, see ya. Bye bye. Good night.